It was great to see particularly the drivers of the policy minister uh, with diversity, population growth and good design. Uh, and that's exactly uh, why the policy is needed and, and, and the things that it needs to address. Uh, certainly as an industry uh, and as a business, uh, underpinning uh, the quality of design. We've seen it done terribly uh, around the country in, in, in some places more than others. And there needs to be a minimum standard here that, uh, that, that we work to. We're here to, we're here to make cities not break them. And uh, the quality of housing product, regardless of density, is important in that regard. Uh, diversity of housing product. Uh, I think this is one of, the, one of the key arguments, really, that helps address the community angst side of things, which I'm sure will come up a bit today. But uh, there is demand uh, for more uh, dense product. Uh, and if you look at Western Australia, or Perth, I should mm. say, compared to the other capital cities around the country, there is a, uh, we're, a, we're a laggard in terms of the proportion of new housing stock that is apartments or townhouses. It's, uh, it's 6% of our housing stock in, uh, in Perth is apartments versus 21% in Sydney and 12% in, uh, in uh, Melbourne. And even uh, Adelaide at 7% has more apartments uh, than Perth, which, ha which has a much higher population. Uh, th there's that and there's the ageing population, there's the proportion of uh, singles. Um, uh, you know, we've got 25% of our dwellings uh, in Australia uh, and nearly 25% in Perth that are occupied by a single person. And not all of these people want to live in a large house or even a townhouse. Uh, so, so providing product for them. And a whole lot of other demand areas like de the downsizers, the young professionals who can't afford the large home. Uh, I think there's plenty of opportunity and justification for more effort and energy in this space. This question uh, is an, is an age-old one, and it's really it, it's come to the fore in Metronet, as the as the minister would know would know well. Um, so, the the tension here is that it costs three hundred thousand dollars, let's say, to build a certain five-bedroom home on the fringe. It costs three hundred thousand to build a three-bedroom townhouse in the middle suburbs and it costs $300,000 to build an apartment uh, let, that's, let's say, two bedrooms. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's the cost differential is just not there. So, so that's, the, that's the tension uh, first off. Um, and, and that is why we've had such difficulty in making uh, medium density projects stack up on the urban fringe and even in parts of the, of the middle suburbs. Uh, so there are parts of Perth um, where, where these projects stack up more than others. Uh, and, and unfortunately for some uh, elements of Metronet, I think the, the, the policy is spot on in terms of what it's trying to do with, with public transport, spot on with what it's trying to do with its density ambitions. It's just unfortunate for now that in some of those locations, we might need to be a, a little bit patient in order to get the density mm. uh, that, that, that we want. Um, or, or uh, find other ways to do it. Um, yes. And the problem has been faced uh, globally. Um, and there are other parts of the metro area as well where the maths do, does work mm. uh, around train stations where, these, uh, where the focus could, could be redirected. Yes, that's great. So Cedarwoods uh, has a portfolio of, of around 2,700 odd apartments and townhouses in its portfolio. We've got nine active projects around the country at the moment in, in this particular space. Uh, we, we, uh, we enjoy uh, delivering in this space because of the demand drivers and the demographic shifts that, uh, that I talked about before. Uh, we have done medium density before uh, in Perth, but we just had a bit of a bit of a hiatus. Uh, we have purchased two TAFE sites, in fact, in our history in Perth. Uh, one in Kareen, uh, that was a project we did in 2007, 2000 mm -hmm. to 2009. Uh, that was uh, at the horrendous end of uh, planning experience. Um, the commercial outcomes were good, uh, the design outcomes were good, but it was a very difficult process. 
then we've got Subiaco. So Subiaco is a project that we're about to launch. Uh, it's, it's by land area, two thirds townhouses, but also some apartments. Uh, the community support has been strong, so that's not the issue with this project. Uh, not that there is a, a material issue with this project. Uh, the planning approval is imminent. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're designing a product that suits two key buyer profiles. The downsizer looking to move out of the five, six, 700 square metre block that accommodated the family home. They want to stay in the area. Uh, they want to cash in on, on, on some of the equity that they've got in that home. Uh, and they're looking for a more secure, lower maintenance dwelling in the same area they're familiar with. And then the second buyer profile is uh, a young professional couple uh, looking uh, to be in an aspirational suburb or the suburb that they've grown up in, can't afford the $1.1 million median, uh, and they'll find our $800,000 buy-in price attractive. Mm. So we're delivering predominantly three bedroom, two bathroom, smartly designed townhouses. Uh, we pride ourselves on the thoughtfulness of our designs, the innovation we bring to these projects. Uh, we've got our, our uh, um, a partner, DKO, on that development who, who uh, are good in this medium density space. And uh, we're, we're, we're really proud of the design outcomes and can't wait to show it to the community. Yes, yeah, so 23,000 uh, people registered on a federal government website last week, uh, expats uh, wanting to return to Australia, mm -hmm. either wanting or needing to return to Australia, with 4,000 of that 23,000 classified as vulnerable, um, to needing to return for, for one reason or another. Uh, and this significantly explains uh, s s the, the, the sales activity we've got around the country, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. of the sales activity we've got around the country. And then, and then on the, uh, the, the foreign buyer uh, topic, I, I think this is just low-hanging fruit for government to remove the vacancy taxes, the states that have them, uh, to remove the 7% foreign buyer taxes that we've got. It's, uh, it's anti-student, uh, and, and I know most of our capital cities have ambitions for international students. Uh, there's a very strong correlation between studying and property, either renting or buying. Mm. Uh, so for me, for us, it's a no-brainer to remove some of those obstacles, uh, roll out the welcome mat, and, and, and make the foreigners welcome. Um, last week, uh, sorry, the last three weeks, despite the quagmire that Victoria is in at the moment, mm. uh, w of our 30 projects, uh, the top three, uh, one of those projects was our Victorian uh, and a Victorian apartment project called Asta. It's a medium density development next to a rail station, uh, and we were achieving extraordinary sales from Hong Kong. Every time there's a protest, every time there's, mm. there's more clampdowns from China, mm. the expats look to return and the Hong Kongese, uh, um, you know, get on the phone and get on the internet and start inquiring. Uh, and this is what happened after Tiananmen Square as well. There were 800,000 uh, people that left, left Hong Kong mm. um, to, off to Vancouver, off to Perth, off to Sydney. So this is a, a great opportunity and we should be rolling out the welcome mat. So finding the balance between uh, being prescriptive enough with the detail to take the uncertainty out of it for those making investment decisions, mm. but balancing that with uh, the, the need to allow room for uh, design with pizzazz and, and thoughtfulness and, 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 it, and innovation. Uh, we like to try and bring something new to each project. Uh, the worst outcome would be that we just have uh, homogeneity throughout our, our, mm. our suburbs. Uh, we need to leave room for innovation and design flair. Uh, so that, um, and then, you know, dealing with the, the elephant in the room, and that's the community angst, um, through how, how you weave consultation into mm. uh, the process, uh, the planning process and development application process, because uh, what, what should occur is, is the Consultation occurs in the setting of the strategic framework. Uh, that is when the community has this say on scale, height, target yield, mm. setbacks, whatever else. Um, but once that's occurred, it's set in stone. And the investment community can then make investment decisions knowing that uh, that, that policy is there and it is going to be seen through. 
The other part, uh, and it's an extension to the policy, is seeing the policy through. Uh, the government having the will and the determination to see the policy through. Often the local politics and, and, and even state politics can interfere, so we've seen that determination and will from you, Minister, um, and, and have no doubt that you'll see through whatever you uh, put in place.